Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is time to end Black Ops 2. Here we are. We are on the final map of Black Ops 2 Origins. And real quickly, this is Fireside Bricky. And in Fireside Bricky, if you do not have food, if you do not have a beverage, if you do not have anything consumable right now, you need to do as I just did and pause the video, get up, go get some, and come back. And also, if you're watching this and you have a Twitter account, do tweet me what you're eating. Because I asked that of the last episode, and man, you people eat some weird ass shit sometimes when you watch my videos. I was, at the time, I was just like, what in the fuck is that? Peanut butter and like Gatorade? Like, goddamn weird cereal with like banana in it, but it was like really mushy ass cereal. It was weird. Some of you people eat some weird stuff. But anyway, this is Fireside Bricky. To those of you who are new, it is the quote-unquote real talk series that I do. Where basically I just have a conversation for a very long extended period of time. And ramble a lot and have awkward silences quite often as well. And it's basically just free flow commentary. It's something I've been doing for quite a long time and really honestly enjoyed it quite a bit. Had a, had a good time with it. Because it's a fun series, I have, I have a fun time, most other people seem to like, uh, seems they enjoy this series as well. Not my most viewed series, but goddamn is it one of my most complimented, which is really not something I expected to begin with, you know. You generally wouldn't think that the uh, least viewed series on your channel is also the one that people like the most, right? Very, at least the one I get the most compliments about, you know. Very odd, but definitely fun. But here we are on Origins. Origins is... Undoubtedly, my number one favorite map in all of Call of Duty Zombies forever. Like, this is my favorite map total. It is also one of the hardest maps in Zombies. Like, goddamn, this map is rough sometimes. This map will kick your ass. Look, there's a giant fucking robot. There's three of these giant fucking robots. This is a difficult map. But like I said, it is a fun map because there is just so much cool stuff the Easter eggs, the songs, the characters. If you could tell, I'm Nikolai. I'm actually playing as the original characters, which reminds me, if you've never played Origins, this is your first time seeing this map, Origins, please go onto YouTube. I'll, actually put, I'll put this in the description. I'll put this in the description. Go watch the opening intro cinematic for this map because the intro cinematic is awesome. Probably the best one. It is great. Very interesting and a lot of fun to watch. And so I would highly suggest you do that so you can get a little bit of background for this map. But this is Origins. We are in World War One, actually, hence the trenches. And uh, I've got like the regular crew, but they're young regular crew. So Nikolai isn't like, oh, vodka ho, 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 anymore. He's like legitimate like Soviet soldier, diehard guy. Rick Toffin's still a little bit weird, but not that weird. Tank Dempsey isn't so angry, and Takio isn't all, like, for the Emperor every half second. He kind of is, but not all the time. It's a very interesting little, uh, little dynamic they've made. And also, the mystery box is, like, super close. So that's like the first destination you go to. Also, a lot different, if you can tell. This entire map is different. Different songs. Different, like, music being played during it. Weather effects. Giant robots. Power generators. New guns. Different color pack-a-punch. The staffs. The staffs, dude. The staffs on this map are intense. Oh, my God. Are they intense. So cool, those staffs. This is a good map. Good map, and I'm ex extremely, extremely excited to play with you guys. So, ah, today is going to be a very interesting Fireside Bricky. Now, I'm a little bit scared because I gotta say this Fireside Bricky with a lot of passion, and this one is specifically a very, this is a hard map, this is a hard as balls map. So, lasting a long time while simultaneously trying to get the staves done, and, you know, doing stuff like that may be difficult. And I may need to redo this a lot. I don't want to, like, run out of steam. But for today, we have a very, very motivational one. I want, I was going to do it last time, but I wanted to save it for today. I wanted to save this kind of stuff for today. 
And or for my favorite map, at least, you know, I mean, this is, a, this is my favorite map by a pretty decent margin, but there are some other ones that I really like as well, like Doris and uh, Der Eisendrach, if that's how you pronounce it, and Mob of the Dead. Some of my favorite maps there, too. But this has undoubtedly been one of my favorites and probably one of the ones I've played the most, if not for uh, World of Wars Doris, because I played Doris a lot. And I know there are German fans out there and they're probably cringing at my German, but I'm sorry, I... I'm an American, I can't speak it well. Also, one of the best things about this map is they start you off with a bolt-action rifle. So you basically have a shit ton of ammo starting off this map. And, you know, you can land headshot after headshot, really getting your points up. Like right here, you know, I can just like, get this ballista. Look how much, look how much I have left, like the amount of ammo I have left. So much after killing so many zombies. Here I am, look at that, look at those robots. They actually step on you, so you gotta watch out for their area. Oh! Thank you! Wee! I am now inside this thing. Oh yeah, you're gonna hear Samantha talk a little bit on this map, just a warning. She talks a lot, she like monologues the map. Not my favorite part of the map, but not like something that's a problem. Wee! Splat. And I'm not dead, who would've guessed? You have to get the staff pieces, one in each robot. So anyway. Uh, what am I oh yeah, Juggernaut. So, motivational. So, a lot of times people ask me questions. They ask me, oh, they always ask me questions. They ask me lots of questions. Like, you know, they ask me, hey, Bricky, why do you, uh, what do you like about videos? Hey, Bricky, why'd you start doing YouTube? Hey, Bricky, what's the best way to do YouTube? Hey, Bricky. Hey, Bricky, you're so fine. You're so fine, you blow my mind. Hey, Bricky. They ask me lots of questions. And um, honestly... I, I answer most of those questions, but one of the ones I get asked a little bit more often than I expect. I mean, there's the obvious, you know, what? Wow. Fuck you guys. <laughs> that was, that was douchebaggy. I didn't think they would kill me. They just like double tap me. One problem with uh, Black Ops 2 zombies is how fast you die. Anyway, so. What was I saying? Oh yeah. Things they ask me. One of the things they ask me is motivation. Because, you know, what motivated me to start doing videos? Why do I start doing videos? What got me into it? They always ask me questions like that. And that's one of the ones that I can't really answer without giving a very long-winded speech. So now I'm here, able to give that said long-winded speech. Borrow this real quick. So... For a while, I, I've had a long, I've, I've had a long life. I've done a lot of good stuff in my life too. I've really enjoyed what I've done. You know, I was, I did some other stuff. Like I was in the martial arts for a while. I did a Subak Do Mudukwam, Korea, uh, South Korean martial arts for uh, about six and a half years. Quite a long time. Taught me a lot of discipline. Uh, I was in the Boy Scouts of America. Uh, was an Eagle Scout and uh, got a double s gold palm recipient, which means once you become Eagle Scout, you also can get more stuff than just Eagle. And I got these things called palms, which are like, you know, extra things. And I got uh, five of them. So it, it goes like bronze, gold, silver. I know, kind of weird. But I got I got the bronze, the gold, the silver. Then I got the bronze and the gold again. And then I was too old to stay in the Scouts. I was in there for 13 years. Yeah, I started when I was five years old and had to leave when I was 18. Obviously, it's a Boy Scouts. When you're an adult, it doesn't it doesn't continue. But, I mean, eventually, after around 15 or younger, I, just, I realized that, hey, you know, the Boy Scout thing isn't necessarily what I'm all about. You know, I mean, I like it. It's fun. But it's mainly so I can, like, help younger kids. And, of course, they actually kind of came under fire for a while, which is... Uh, because um, the district leaders would like, I say, I think weren't accepting openly uh, gay scouts to the thing. And that's actually kind of when I left, uh, right when I turned 18, which is kind of good. Because they don't want to have to deal with that. Because honestly, you know, my I knew oh, like a bunch of openly gay kids in my uh, in my scouting troop. And like they're like like three or four. Well, not really openly gay, but like, you know, you, you knew they were gay. Like there, you, there was no doubt in your fucking mind. But my troop didn't care. My troop, my troop was like totally fine with this kind of stuff. It's just, it's those, it's the damn district dudes, you know, the, the really, the higher up people that are like upset about, they're like 70 years old and don't, don't have like an ear for reality nowadays. They're the ones that are like, you know, can't have gay kids and we're all just like, whatever, just, I don't give a shit. The, the, the organization is kind of fucked up right now. 
Um, but what's nice is that like if it's run by the kids, like it should be, like I I was like the leader for a while. Like if it's run by us, it, it runs well. Like you can you can run the thing well. Like you can teach kids good stuff, teach them discipline, work with them. Because a lot of times parents just drop them at the Boy Scouts. It's like a way to have them like babysit their kid practically. And they don't really pay a lot of attention. So you got kids growing up. Wow, nice ray gun. You got kids growing up whose parents don't really like spend much time with them and just basically drop them at this, at, you know, scouting events, stuff like that. And that ain't cool. So I'm like kind of take up as a parent almost to some of these kids. But anyhow, that's I did that for a while. And I mean, I enjoyed it. But, you know, like I said earlier, some of the, uh, the parents, stuff like that were, were kind of assholes and... You kind of have to deal with those kinds of people. There's something you can really do about it. You just got to like, just got to kind of turn a blind eye and try to do camping and activities and enjoy yourself. But, you know, I, I was one, like one of the bigger people that kids looked up to. You know, I was one of the few older people in the troop. I mainly worked with the adults more than the kids. You know, like a lot of them actually came to me for advice than uh, the kids did because they were one because they were like new parents with new kids just coming in like hey what the fuck do we do and as a, like, as a parent like we want to make a difference in the in the troop and i was like okay well let me tell you you know i was i was the veteran basically and it sounds cringy because let's be honest the whole boy scout thing can be kind of cringy but it was it was good like i was i was thinking to myself like hey i can make a difference in these kids lives you know they're undisciplined and you know maybe they don't know what to do with their lives and i can be there and like legitimately help them out i can be like a little like a head figure for them and it felt good it honestly felt really good, the fact that I could do that. And so that's why I did that. That's why I stayed for such a long time. That's why I remained, like, in the troop for such a long time, because kids needed needed me. And it's an interesting thing, because once I'm out of the scouts, you know, I have to take what I learned in there. And there was, um, I when you do... When you become an Eagle Scout, you actually ask for letters of recommendation, things like that. And you ask for, you ask like famous people like, hey, can you sign a letter of recommendation? It's kind of a weird thing, but basically it's like, hey, can you basically give me a signature that says, yeah, you're cool. You should become an Eagle Scout, even though they have no idea who I am. It's more of like a, a bragging rights thing. Like, hey, check it out. This guy uh, signed it. And I actually got one sign. I got one signed by a lot, a lot of the people. There was like... The obvious one where it was a, uh, it was like, not a fake signature, but it was a, um, uh, heist. Well, I guess it could be considered fake, but it's, it was not like they didn't actually put the, the pen to paper. It was more like a pre-registered signature from the president at the time, which was, uh, President Obama. And then I got some other people from other famous people, a couple actors. But one of the ones that was the most interesting was I got a signature from Mike Rowe from Dirty Jobs. You remember Mike Rowe? You guys should know Mike Rowe. I mean, if you watched Discovery Channel back in the day, you should know who Mike Rowe was. He did the Dirty Jobs show. You know, he basically went around and was like, hey, you know, he would go do this really disgusting, difficult job in blue-collar workers and shed some light on them because blue-collar workers are people that we never really think to thank because they do a hell of a lot of work for us, but they don't really like, we don't really think about them too often. They, we really should because they're important. And I'm trying to remember where the fuck Double Tap is on this map. I don't remember what Double Tap is on this map. I might need a new gun, too. Chikom is not super great. Anyway. And he, he had a very interesting letter. He said, like, hey, you know... And it was actually his real signature. Like, he actually, like, had pen to paper on this one. So he legit signed this thing. And he said, you know, hey, you know, I understand. You know, Boy Scout, Eagle Scout, great. Awesome. Coolest thing ever, you know? Really, really, really cool. Very good for both yourself and the future. College applications and job applications. If you're an Eagle Scout, you like, that's like instant in. Like, j getting a job was really not that difficult for me because I got, had all this like seven years of work thing. You know, people love, people love the whole Eagle Scout thing. And so he said, hey, cool, good job. Don't get hung up on it though. You, you had your glory days. You did the good, you know, your good stuff. Now it's time to hang up the sash, you know, maybe, you know, put it in the closet. Just let it kind of, you know, stay away because that doesn't matter anymore. You've done your thing. Now it's time for you to start doing real world stuff. You know, Eagle Scout isn't going to help you on, I mean, it'll help you with some job applications, sure, but that's like only for retail and things like that. You want a legit job. You want crazy stuff. You want to... Go to college and you want to like earn a crazy degree and go $500,000 in debt? 
obviously not that much in depth, but you get the point. All right, like go ahead, understand. Like eventually, you know that Eagle Scout badge ain't gonna help you with a crazy amount of debt. It's not gonna help you with a real world job. It's great now, it won't change much. And it really stuck with me. And I watched a video earlier today that said, "Don't follow your passion." It was on Reddit, I believe. And it was Mike Rose saying, hey, like, I get it, you know, people like always tell you, follow your dreams, follow your dreams, follow your dreams. And in reality, if you're shit at what your dreams are, <laughs> you're just going to waste your time. You're just going to waste your time. If your dream, like, he, he made a great example. He said, if like, you go watch the American Idol, right? And when people go on stage and, and you know, are on American Idol and the judges just rip them a new asshole... They're sad, but they're not sad because the judges, like, you know, because their dream didn't pay off. They're sad because they realize that they're shit at their dream. That their dream, their, their wants, their hope, they're terrible at it. They can't sing for crap. Like, like that sucks, man. You're, the thing you've wanted to do the entire life, you realize you suck at it. And that, that's just awful, but it's like a truth that they need to accept. Because if they keep on trying to follow their dream, if they keep on trying to be this amazing singer, singer and they don't have the talent, and they just do not have the talent to sing, they, they're not gonna go anywhere. They're gonna spend all their life living in a crappy apartment with college debt or in their parents' house until like like a really long late age trying to sing, trying to get a job as like some kind of singer that they will never get because they're not good at it. This is the same thing with YouTube. You know, like I don't want to try and brag. I don't want to be like Mr. Greatest YouTuber in the world. I don't want to be like, oh, Brick York at eight, best guy ever. No, 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 I'm not the best making videos at all, but I know I'm good at them. I know I'm good at making videos, because if I was bad at making videos, I wouldn't have a fucking audience. I would have no audience if I was shit at making videos. I mean, people may say I'm shit at making videos because, I mean, hey, everyone has their opinion. But, I mean, I'm no Jax Films, you know. I, I don't have, like, really high, you know, really well-made, exceptionally interesting videos. You know, I can't make excellent, like, high production quality videos. That's not my forte. I'm good at making, re like, down-to-earth, real either guide like spoof guide satire comedy or just down-to-earth commentary that's what i'm good at i'm not good at you know well at least i don't know if i'm good at them yet i haven't really tried them a whole lot but i don't think i'm that good at like you know the the damn you know high-end quality videos impressively made videos that's not my thing and it's a different kind of video you know but i know what i'm good at and so i decided to keep doing what i'm good at and what do you know i'm I mean, my channel's growing fucking fast, dude. Like, like, damn, my channel's growing insanely fast for my size. And it's exciting. And it's because I, I know what to do. It's because I make my, have good thumbnails on most of my videos. It's because I have uh, good search results. It's because I have series and people want to keep watching series. There's a method to the madness. And that's what's making my channel do so well is because of this stuff. You know? I always, always say something, hey, you know, if you have a dream, make that dream your hobby. You know, your dream can be a hobby, that's great. Just understand that if you're shitty at your dream, you can't make it a job. If, it, if your, your hobby, or if your dream is to be one of the best chess players in the world, yeah, you can probably make some money off of it, but if you're not good at chess, just make chess a hobby. Play in some tournaments, have fun, but don't... Don't try to make chess a job, because then you won't go anywhere. Nothing will nothing will work out for you. That's the rough part. That's the difficult part with all this kind of stuff. Is It's not like... No one's going to care. Going to... I need Mule Kick next up. Gotta get that next perk right here. But, you know... If... Uh, that's why I always say is, you know, if you're good at something and you love doing it, then you can make a living off of it. If you're good at it and you love it. Some person may really, really, really badly want to do YouTube. They really want to do YouTube. But if they're crap at it, then sucks, dude. Sucks. You can't do it. You can do it as a side thing, but you're not going to make a ton of money off of it. If, say you want to be a shout cat or a League of Legends pro player. Say you want to go pro. 
have at it. Give it a shot. But if you're shit at the game, you're not going to go anywhere. Don't quit your day job to try and go pro. It's... I may it may be sounding like I'm saying don't you know your dreams are crap, but I'm not trying to say that. I'm basically saying, hey, be realistic. Understand what you're the hell? Oh, hello. Understand like what you can do and what you shouldn't do. Like it, it may sound like I'm being egotistical, it may be sound like it may be uh sound like I'm saying, hey, I'm the only one who can do this, but that's totally not fucking true. There are a million YouTubers way better than me because they knew what to do. The YouTubers growing faster than me because they know what to do. There there are a million people that do what I do better. But some of the people maybe just didn't, you know, or sorry, let me phrase that. Because they're good at what they do and they're passionate about it. You know, there are better streamers than me because they knew what they were doing and they were passionate about it. There are better YouTubers because they knew what they were doing and they were passionate about it. There are a ton of people who are better at, than me at what at YouTube and things like that because they know what to do and they are more passionate about it. And they've been doing it for longer. You know, that's, that's the thing. P if you want to follow your dreams, follow them. But keep the dream a hobby if you're not good at them. Understand real life. Because real life isn't going to give a shit if you want to be an aspiring singer. If you're bad at singing, real life is going to laugh at your face and be like, sucks, dude. There is a, uh, there's a quote. Uh, one of them is from, uh, what's it? It's, it's from Bioshock. I have, I have tattoos on my right leg. My right calf has a bunch of tattoos. All the tattoos are, um, quotes. Every single one of them. I think there's like four now. And I, I keep making more and more. I keep making more and more quotes. Oh, right. Take isn't here. I keep making more and more tattoo quotes on my leg. The more and more stuff I find interesting. And the first one I got was from Bioshock. It was, would you kindly? My, um, yeah, it was, would you kindly? That, that was my first quote on my leg. Very big one, too. And what it tell, what it reminds me is, okay, so spoilers for Bioshock 1, a 2007 game. If you haven't heard Bioshock 1, I'm pretty sure you know it by now, though. Your character, um, I think his name was Jack. You don't really remember his name too much. Is ordered around by a guy named Atlas. Atlas is basically this Irish guy, you know. He's like, he's just telling you where to go and what to do and things like that. And, you know, he occasionally says this phrase. You know, he says, would you kindly. Now, would you kindly is obviously a, a common phrase. You know, he's Irish. He says things like that, whatever. You know, you don't know. And would you kindly, you know, would you kindly go get this? Would you kindly go get that? Would you kindly do this? Would you kindly do that, right? That's just what he says and you don't really think much about it right you don't really care it's just whatever he says what you kindly and then you go and then the game game tells you hey go pick this thing up you know and that's your next objective is go pick this up he said would you kindly pick up that gun and then you're like yeah okay whatever and then you go pick up the gun it's simple video game logic right it isn't until the end of the game that you realize that your character is like sleeper cell based agent basically sleeper agent basically and would you kindly is your activation phrase so, the entire game, you're basically thinking to yourself, okay, the game tells me I need to do these things. And, like, okay, the game tells me I need to pick this up. That's what the game is telling me to do. And you never actually know that the would you kindly, until the end that is, is actually the phrase that he's actually controlling you. The reason the game tells you you can't compress, oh, uh, sorry, you can't progress until you do this thing is because of that phrase because he is literally forcing you to do this thing he is saying hey you've got to do this and it, his betrayal because he betrays you at the end really fucking stung it really hurt because the entire time you think you're making your own choices you think the entire time, this is my choices, right? I'm making these choices. This is what I chose to do. I chose to pick up the gun because the game told me to pick up the gun, you know? And you never realize that you're just being this puppet. You're this, this damn puppet being held on by strings the entire game. And that really stung for players. Like, we're like, wow, you know, fuck you, dude, right? What an, I'm, I'm looking for mounds to dig up on, by the way. That's why I'm running around. Like, goddamn, that, it really fucking stung. It was really unfortunate and quite annoying. And that's what made the betrayal so, like, so crazy. So, 
At the end of the game, the would you kindly phrase was used to kill Andrew Ryan. And that was the entire point. At the end, he says, would you kindly go to Ryan's office and kill that son of a bitch? And you are at the end of the game without, you know, without allowing you to do anything, forced to go to Ryan and then beat him to death with a golf club. And I thought to myself, you know, for a long time that that quote meant, oh, wait, hold on. Nailed it. What that quote meant and what it like, how it affected the player. And so I got that quote tattooed on my on my leg because it's a reminder to me. It reminds me, hey, I'm not a puppet on strings. I'm not the one being told what to do. I'm the master of my own life. You know, you, you know this this whole idea of I mean, if you believe in this stuff, that's fine, I guess, but for me, I think you got this stuff like you've got destiny and this stuff was meant to be. It's supposed to be this way. You have you know, oh, this is... Uh, okay, I, I don't want to be this on anyone who's religious, okay? D being religious, that's fine. It's totally fine. But for me, you know, it's this idea that, okay, this this was God's plan, right? This was this kind of stuff. This was, you know, whatever, whether it be God, whether it be, you know, Buddha or Muhammad, whatever it is. This was like a spiritual plan set in motion already. This is already in motion. This has to happen this way because that's how it's said to happen the, the entire time i'm thinking to myself fuck that fuck that shit dude fuck destiny fuck it was meant to be fuck that stuff this is my life my my future isn't set in stone my future isn't like isn't already made up for me fuck that shit i make my future this is my life. I make this decision. And, you know, screw anyone who says otherwise, man. Like, you say, oh, no, this, you know, this only happened because... Oh, I forgot the gramophone. This only happened because of this reason, you know. Hey, it was just meant to be. No, 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 no. No, it wasn't meant to be. Something bad happens. Something bad happens to me. Something terrible happens to one of my family or something like that. Guess what? That happened. It happened because shit happens. If a family member of mine dies, then then it died because whatever happened. Maybe, you no, know, they were texting and driving and then they died. Maybe they had a heart attack. Guess what? That's what happens. Sucks. It, it sucks. Like, I'm, am I going to be sad about that? Yeah, it's going to suck. I feel really bad. But it's not like, oh, it was meant to be this way. No, no, it wasn't. It just happened. It just happened. That's it. If Same thing with YouTube and, and life. Like For me, if... If my YouTube channel becomes garbage, if my channel dies out and I'm struggling for money and I have to go work at a McDonald's and try to make up the lost profits and Bricky just dies, that's my fault. It's no one else's fault. It's not a coincidence. It's not because it was meant to be. It's not a, a sign saying that I should go do a different job. No, it's because I fucked up. If, my, if I become the next PewDiePie, if my channel gets millions of subs upon millions upon millions, and I grow to an exponential rate, if I become a millionaire and I make a boatload of money and have a gorgeous house in Hollywood Hills with a blonde bombshell of a wife, and I am living it up, and this is like the best thing of myself, guess what? That's not because I was lucky. That's not because I was, you know, things worked out for me. It's not because I, I got my, someone else helped me with my channel. No, it's because I did it. I made my channel that way. It's because I put in the work, I put in the hard work, and I made my life. I created my goal. I did this myself. This is not because someone else did it. This is not because someone helped me. This is not because... You know, I I got lucky. No, 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 no. There is, luck is not a factor. I made my own luck. I made videos that I love to make, and I apparently have a personality people want to listen to. I have people who watch me ramble for hours upon hours every week who pause the video to go get food because I told them to. I, this is what my life is like because... That is because I made it that way. Not because of anyone else. Not because I was told to do something. No, 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 no. I'm independent. My parents told me, hey, we'll pay for your school 
when you're going into college? I said, no. I said, fuck that. No, I, I want to pay for it myself. This is my choice. I made the choice. I'll spend the, the shit ton of, of money that it takes to go to school because this is what I want to do. This is my education. I, like, I guess you want to help me, but I'm not going to take it. But I mean, I mean, hell, even if I did take it, then okay, I took it. Cool. I made the choice. I made the choice not to take it. You know, I, I spend the money because I want to feel self-independent. I am now practically an entrepreneur right now. I made a channel on my own sheer will. God, God damn it, dude. I spent 40 hours a week working at my EMT job, taking patients that didn't like me to nurses that were that would yell at me for a boss that wasn't a huge fan of me for a minimum wage-esque paycheck. 11 hours a day, four days a week. I, I, at the same time, at the same time, went to school through three classes the week and also started making YouTube videos and streamed. A YouTube video like every two days and streamed consistently. I did all this at once. I had no time for myself because I willed to do this kind of thing. I wanted to do this. This was my goal. I wanted to be this New, I, I saw an opportunity. I saw an opportunity in YouTube and I took it. And I slaved over it over and over again because that was what I wanted to do. And it's the same thing with you. You as an audience, you have goals. You have aspirations. You have things you want to do and people you want to meet. You have all this stuff you want to do in your life. You have aspirations and goals as well. If you have things that you want to do to make you happy, just as much as I had things that I wanted to do. This doesn't come easy. Nothing comes easy. If you're if you're watching this video and you know to yourself, you know what, in like an hour I have to go work at a at a job I hate to make less money than I want, you know what you gotta do? You gotta fucking change that. You fix that. You find the thing that you're not only passionate about but also good at. And you, and you make that into a job if you can. If you can't, work harder. Find a different job. Work your fucking ass off. Because if you're sitting there doing that job because you, you know, were like me and would just play video games all day, buddy, that's your fault. That's your fault. That's not the man coming out to get you. That's not, that's not like, you know, that's not because of politics. That's not because... You know, you had bad opportunities in life. I mean, maybe it's rough, dude. Maybe, maybe your your time is rough right now. Maybe it is, but there is nothing that working hard as shit and taking personal responsibility for can stop. There is so much you can do if you just if you just take the effort. There is so much you could do. You know, you wanna you wanna earn more money? Go, work your ass off at your job, then go to your boss and say, "Hey, I want to raise." And if they say no. Quit the job. Find a job that can get you more money. If you if you want to be like a shift leader or a manager and you can do it, go do it. Ask them. Be like, hey, I've been working here for like a year or six months or whatever. I've done great work for this company. I expect to be, I want to get paid more. I want more money. I Because money is what makes the world go around, dude. You want to follow your dreams. You want to do what you love. You need money for it. You need money for it. That's the that's the cold hard fact. If your passion is being a video game developer, you're gonna need to buy a uh, video game uh, creating software. You need C plus plus or HTML five or whatever the hell you want to code with. You're gonna need to hire artists. You're gonna need to do artists artists do stuff. You're gonna need the time to do so. You're going to need money. You're going to need to do this kind of stuff. You need to train. You need to work. And that is how it works. That's what happens. What you got to you got to t you got to work your life. If you are working that shitty nine to five job that you do not like whatsoever, that's because you put yourself there. S stop working the nine to five. Find another job. S like learn, work. Like work. if you don't like the pay, work harder and get more money. If you want to try something else, you want to be like a certain like an engineer, go study engineering. Study it on your own time. Take the time that would be spent for fun and turn it into studying. People always talk about the American dream, right? This is the American dream. Is that you? if you go to America, you can work hard and do whatever you want. Well, guess what? No one remembers that the American dream is a dream that 
you need to work on. The American dream is like, anything is possible in America, right? That, that was the old dream back in like the 20s and stuff, the immigration, the roaring 20s. Well, it still is the same. The American dream is totally still alive. Totally. But you just need to work. It's just, a, it's just really hard now. It's much harder. You just need to work your ass off and eventually, oh, you'll get some, you'll get, go places. You will go places. So long as you work your ass off and you can, and you can really, you know, like specifically spend the time to do stuff. The American dream is definitely not dead. Everyone says the American dream is dead. No way, man. No way. YouTubers are living proof of that. YouTubers are living proof of people who came from literally making a video with not a single fucking person watching it to making videos that millions of people watch. YouTubers are living proof that the American dream is not dead. It's just a fact. It's just a fact. Oh, damn, I did want this. Come on, give me, give me the other one. Give me the other one. Oh, yeah, I'll take that, all right. Come on, where's Double Tap? It's in here somewhere. I'll get that later. I, I know this, this may not appear to be the thing that you hear the most. Not a lot of people say stuff like this. Especially a YouTuber, you know? Because it almost comes out of, off as egot uh, egotistical sometimes. Oh, that was creepy. That's weird. Stop whispering to me, please. Okay, here we go. That was creepy. Freaking weird, man. Freaking weird, dude. But, like, you know, it's it's harder to say things like this when you are already doing well with your life. You know, I mean, I'm I'm my channel's doing well, man. I'm happy. I'm happy because I worked my ass off and I got to where I wanted to be. I, I quit that job. And now I can relax and work hard and, and, and keep growing the channel and move, move out soon. Like, like this means a lot. It means a lot, dude. Like, this, this is important. Because when you take responsibility for your actions and you can realize that, hey, things aren't just coincidence or luck. You know, a lot of people think that YouTube is luck. Nah, dude. No way, dude. If YouTube was all luck, those giant YouTubers that get like tens of thousands of views on their videos, that get crap for views, because it's because their channel died. Because they didn't do it well. They made they, they were good in the beginning, and then they fucked up, and now they're bad. Like, that's just, it just happens. You know? They, they could have stopped it. They could have done something about it. But they didn't, and now they're now they're making way less money. They're not doing very well. It's it's I guess that's their fault. You know, personal responsibility is something that people sorely are lacking nowadays. Sorely are lacking. Like you gotta understand things like that. Like yeah, you can do stuff. You got opportunities. You just gotta take advantage of them. Make your own luck. Make your own luck. I mean, yeah, you know, you could. I mean, obviously, I'm not saying that luck doesn't exist, you know. I mean, there are obviously things that you could be lucky on, you know. You, I, I would say if I go buy a lottery ticket and I win, that was lucky. Oh, yeah, I was lucky. It's not because, like, I believed it and therefore it became a thing. But some people believe that stuff. My dad uh, is a very spiritual person. He believes in the idea that if you wish it, if you consistently put your mind to it and you say to yourself constantly, to yourself over and over again, I will do this. By the end of this year, I will have a job that pays me this much money and I will have a gorgeous wife. And you say that to yourself every morning and you just keep saying that to yourself. He says eventually you'll get that. because It's like the theory of um, like, like the universe giving back or something like that. Um, mental... There's, I forget what it's called, but there was a book about it. Um, the Science of Getting Rich was the, was the book. It's like people saying, hey, I'm going to make however much money a month at the end of the year. And then they make, by, by telling themselves, I am making this money. It's just by, like a mental thing. For me, I don't really believe that as much. I think it's a fantastic placebo because so long as you, you know, you think like that, you'll eventually like, you know, if you put your mind to it, that becomes kind of like a placebo of, hey, 
I'm I am doing I like my job and I'm doing well. So by saying that, you'll you know like you'll be more confident and you'll work better because you're not as stressed out. That I believe. You know, that kind of thing I believe. I don't believe in the exact thing specifically. But, you know, I can understand it. I think it's a great placebo effect. He disagrees, but that's that's fine. I don't believe everything my parents tell me. That's that's not that's how it should be, you know? Your parents are people too. Take take what they say with a grain of salt. I mean, of course, if you're like really young, then probably should believe some things. Don't cross the street without looking both ways. Fuck you, mom! And then you get hit by the uh get hit by a car. Yeah, but, I mean, you know what I mean. That's the thing. That's that's the thing. You know, people just forget that stuff. Like, you know, work was just you gotta work hard, man. You know, I have I know one of my f close friends right now is is um watching this video probably right now. I know he is. He's working at Hot Topic right now. I know he he's he's working at Hot Topic in the Irvine Spectrum. Great buddy of mine. Known him for a long time. And what's interesting about about him is that I could tell he has a ton of aspirations. He has a ton of aspirations. There are things he really wants to do that he just isn't able to do right now in his position. I know he doesn't want to be at Hot Topic. I know he doesn't want to work there. He definitely doesn't want to work there. And he's, he's good. He's the manager. Like he's, he, I mean, he did well. He, he did what I said. He was working shitty retail, and he was able to make his way up to the point where not only does he make more money than other people, but he makes commission. That's great. But I know he doesn't want to work there forever. He's got goals in his life. He's got aspirations. He's got things he wants to do that do not revolve around working at an edgy store, you know? But he's getting there, you know? He's doing well right now. He's so much more mature than I remember him being back in the day. Like, fuck, dude. Way more mature. He's got, he's got, a girl, he's got this smoking hot girlfriend, too, who's a lot older than he is, but, like, also really mature, who also has goals in her life, and she's doing well. Like, I look at both of them, and I think to myself, together, working together, they're like yin and yang. They complement each other in, in the areas that they're weakest at. And with enough work and enough progress and enough time, they will go They will go places. Because they just need to understand the amount of time and work it'll take for them to get there. You know? Things, things like what they want to do won't come overnight. It's just true. It's just true. And they can make their way up. They can save money. They can they can work higher up in their company. They they will get there so long as they just take the time to do so. That's just how that works, man. Just how that works. I know I know he's watching this right now because he watches these videos. And hey buddy, like it's true. I, I know. I can tell. Almost everyone in our group of friends, like honestly has aspirations but it's just they just gotta take the time to find them you know and then there are some people in our group of friends that won't go very far because that's just they just don't have the they don't just don't have the fucking drive man you gotta have that drive i warned you it's gonna be inspirational or try to be motivational I mean, that's why I said, at the end of the day, I, I talk a lot about personal responsibility and things like that, but what I want you to take away from this, at the end of the day, is the whole would you kindly thing I mentioned earlier. Fuck destiny, fuck the bad decisions, fuck any problem like that, fuck the area you live in, fuck, fuck all that stuff. It doesn't matter. None of that matters. Your future is nowhere. It's not set in stone. It's not even set in like water. It's not even fucking air. It's not set at all. You are the only person who can make that decision. You are the one who is like the master of your own life. You're not a puppet on strings. No, 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 no. You, if you look at your current situation, you can look at that situation. You can be, and you can hold a giant middle finger to what's currently going on with you, and you can say, "Fuck this." And then you can go make something amazing with your life. You can find a hobby that you're great at. You can make a job out of it. You can find things that you know you love. And you can make it into a job. Just understand you got to be good at it too. You got to be good at it. Under understand. Get that giant dose of reality. Understand certain things you'll never be. Because you're just not good at it. You know? That's the simple fact. I really wanted to be a firefighter. I really wanted to be a firefighter bad, dude. Like, I... That was my goal. 
And it took me a while to realize when I was working as an EMT that I don't like this job. I, w I held on to it for as long as I could. I tried to like it really hard. I tried to like it. And I wasn't bad at it either. I wasn't that bad at it. I could be, I could be better, but I wasn't that bad at, work at my job. But I eventually realized, no, this is not okay. I am not good at this like I want to be. Like I, like, I do not like this job as much as I want to. Like, I'm, I'm holding on to it as hard as I can. But this is not, this is not going to happen. And so I quit. And I decided to follow a different aspiration. Something that I both loved and was good at. And that aspiration is why you're listening to me tell you this tale right now. That's just the way, man. That's just the way it goes. Eventually, eventually, things will work out. You just, you just gotta take the time, man. <sighs> Damn, dude. That was a lot of speaking. I want to tell you guys, I, just, just a thing. I'm probably going to say these things again. I'm probably going to reiterate this again. And I'm probably going to be like, I'm probably going to make like a, a motivational video or something like that at some point just because. Because I want I like to motivate people. I'm probably going to make like a separate video. So I'm probably going to say all this stuff over again in some other like vlog or something. But for now, I want you guys to realize that. You know, you don't like your situation, hold a giant big ass middle finger and say fuck that time for me to find my own thing you know another uh here's a story i want to tell you guys a story so i was working as an emt and i was working on my job and i had a buddy of mine buddy named joseph joseph was about five or six years older than me i was 19 he was like 25 i think maybe a little bit younger 24 or no actually they made that a little bit older doesn't matter. Maybe 26 or so. Regardless, good guy. Great guy. Probably the most liked person in the entire uh, entire um, company. Really nice. Fun to hang out with. Just very mellow, too. Knew what he was doing. Strong. Lifted well. That's one of the good things is that one of the best things is like when you have a partner and you have like heavy patients, having a strong partner is always just so great because they are able to lift like without problem and it's not all on your end. Because sometimes people just aren't strong enough and, you know, you got to do all the work yourself. And you're like, ugh. But he was definitely one who could lift well. One sec. Got to kill these guys. So anyway, we're working a shift and we are getting fucking railed. We are getting destroyed on this shift. Like, holy shit. This is bad. Like, okay, this actually, actually this is also bad in-game too. Come on. No, fuck. God damn, son of a bitch with the fire. I hate that move. Okay. So, anyhow. Okay, give me a second. I'll, I'll, I'll finish the story. Oh! What the hell? Why aren't these guys dead? Okay, I'm getting out of here. So. Shit. Is this thing? Oh, yeah. Story. I, I want to get my perks back, though, real quick before I, uh... Before I continue my story, though, because I really, I really don't want to die right now. This is like a bad time to die because I'm like doing super well. The ice staff probably wouldn't have killed them either. That's why I didn't use it. I was waiting to use it for like an AOE. Speaking of, did I lose my ice staff? I lost my ice staff. Well, I didn't lose it forever. It's like just down in the uh, the hole, but whatever. Okay, story time. So we're getting on a call and we uh, start, I think, at like around, I think we started at 8 o'clock in the morning. And it's 11 hour shift, so we get off at 7. And we are just getting fisted this call. We had we had signups the entire day. We were just, it was like call, like a call takes about like an hour or so to complete. We had like seven calls, right? We were just getting destroyed that day. The call, then another call, and when we think we have a, a time off, we get another call, and then we're just getting absolutely just rammed by uh, by this entire thing. Like it is, it is rough. It is really rough. So, because of this, we're tired. We, we're we're exhausted. We're just like, I just want this to be fucking over, dude. Like we are so dumb, and so we finally got a time to just relax right we could we could finally get some food to eat because we hadn't eaten in like seven hours so we're like okay i don't know what the hell it gets so we eventually drive to this one area in cyprus north orange county and there was a food truck convention there like like 12 food trucks there and we were like fuck it dude let's go 
So we went to the food truck place, and we and it was like in a whole Nebo parking lot, but everyone was there with like their pickup trucks, with like camping chairs, just everyone laughing and having a good time, eating whatever they got at the food trucks, just enjoying themselves, and it was really cool, you know, because yeah, there's all these screws of people just in this parking lot, and we're moving this fat ass uh, ambulance trying to get around and into this, um, trying to get into this area, right? Just just being like. Trying to um, make our way through this giant hodgepodge of people in cars, and it was really tough because we're in this big ass ambulance. And it was it was pretty humorous to look at too. Like it was funny to watch. Where's double tap on this map? Did they put double tap again? Isn't it like in a certain area or something? Uh, I gotta find double tap somewhere. I'll find it eventually. But anyway. Um, yeah, so, it, it was just that kind of stuff, right? It was, like, just, just stupidly hilarious, like, how difficult, like, how we were moving this fat ambulance in the way through all these people. And so we go and we find this grilled cheese truck. And it was this grilled cheese, oh, it's grilled cheese truck, but, uh, I got a grilled cheese with macaroni and cheese, like, the crunchy macaroni and cheese, the really good stuff, com uh, with barbecue sauce and, uh, tri-tip. Or no, it was pulled pork. Pulled pork barbecue sauce and stuff like that. And with bacon on it. And it had like cheese on it, but also like crunchy mac and cheese com combined into it. Oh my fucking God. It, I could feel the diabetes hitting me. But it was so delicious. Like, holy shit. It was good. It was so good. And we were sitting there. Getting rammed the entire day through calls. Sitting in this fat ambulance in the middle of this hodgepodge of people. Knowing full well it'll take us like 15 minutes to just get out of the fucking place. And we were eating this this just like artery clogging grilled cheese. And we just started laughing. And we just started laughing our fucking asses off. We thought it was the funniest thing ever. We were like in tears laughing. And at that, it was at that moment that I thought to myself, "It's not all that bad. It's really not that all bad. Uh, that all bad. Eighty-five percent of this job may suck, but that one percent, that one percent is pretty fucking nice. And it felt good. It felt really good. I I was really happy in that moment. That was one of the happiest moments I I could think of. Because no other. I mean, even though you, a situation may be shitty." A situation may suck. There's always a silver lining. There's always a silver lining. There's always something you can do to help. And that's what we did. We laughed our asses off and ate macaroni and cheese, grilled cheese down there. And it was great. And it was great. It was delicious. It was some delicious shit, man. It was tasty. <sighs> and that was, uh... That was that. That's what happened. And it just, it just gave me that thought that like, hey, no, it's not all that bad. It's really not all that bad. Things could be much, much worse. And it made me just really happy, man. It just made me work really fucking happy. And I mean, you may not know this about me, but I am very rarely ever like sad. Like, as of lately, depressed, upset with something, you know, worried... I, mean, I can be worried, but depressed, like, sad or anything like that, it's not something I feel anymore. I, I used to have some problems like that, but I just don't, I'm not too upset anymore, because I made a life for myself that I love. And that's what you guys got to do, too. That's what you all need to do, is make a life for yourself that you love, because that's what's important. <sighs> I can't really think of much else to say now. I mean, I have, I always have, like, life advice and things like that, but that's all this really was, was life advice. And I mean, at the end of the day, you, you could just say, fuck you, Bricky, I think that's a stupid life advice. I think that's terrible. And you know what? All right. Hey, you do you. Like, I mean, if you want, if you don't want to, you know, live life this, you know, that way, if you want, don't want to take my advice, you want to do your own thing, you have your own way of doing things, totally fine. That's what you want to do? Have at it. There is nothing wrong with making your own decisions. 
Nothing wrong whatsoever. I, I implore you to make them over blindly following me anyway. It's better that way. It's I would rather have you make your own decisions than just follow my my what I said because you think that's a, like because I said it. That's one of the worst things that we can occasionally have with like YouTube fanboys is they'll blindly follow a channel because they just they just like them or something like that. I like I mean my fans can be sometimes pretty damn silly, but I like the fact that my fans were also free thinkers. I like the fact that my fans actually made decisions on their own. I like the fact that my fans would call me out on stuff. They're like, hey, Bricky, that I didn't like this. This video wasn't good. I thought it was bad. I thought it was kind of shitty. I don't I don't I thought that your jokes didn't land. I just didn't do this, you know. Pe like like I'm glad that my fans can actually think and aren't just like mindless. Like like I, no no offense to the guy, okay? No offense to the guy whatsoever. But I mean, Leafy's fans, like they're they're pretty brainless sometimes. Like, okay, brainless is not the right word. I, I think that like they're they just follow they blindly just follow him to no extent to no end. And while I get that maybe that's a little bit because the way his channel works and his channel is kind of like that way, very very memey and people just kind of like go along with it. I, I get that, but I would rather I would rather not have that kind of fan base that would just you know follow him blindly. I, would, I much prefer my kind of fan base where it's just like, hey, you know, we can have civilized discussion and really think about stuff and really discuss things. That's what I like a lot about my fan base. We can do that stuff. We can talk. I, I talk with people on my Twitch stream all the time. We have interesting conversations. It's very interesting. And like, I mean, like I said, no offense to the guy at all. You know, he does what he wants to do. But I do think that his fan base can be a little bit like, you know, I mean, we we all know what his fan base is like. Very, very, you know, senpai, please love me fan base. His fan base is very much like that. And, you know, I mean, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just not what I want. You know? It's just not my kind of thing. Like, I would rather have fans that would, like, you know, call me out on, on dumb shit I do and be like, you know, ha actually be free thinkers. Man. If only Twitch was a bigger thing back in Black Ops 2. You could make the cap 40, the cap of 40. Would have turned into something really cool. Too bad I took it out of the box right when I got a max ammo. Oh, son of a bitch. Uh, now this is why I made the Fireside Bricky series. Because I'm not, I don't want to be a zombie. I, I know, humorous that I'm playing zombies, right? But I don't want to be just that, you know, I, just, I don't want to be Mr. You know, hardcore devoted fans, you know, I want to have a discussion. I mean, honestly, to be fair, though, I mean, honestly, hardcore, just silly ass devoted fans isn't always like a bad thing. But I like the fact that I can have a lot of decent conversation. You know, there are some things I'm like, yeah, I mean, if you guys want to be all like, you know, Mimi and stuff like stuff like that and just kind of go hardcore, like sucking Bricky's dick, then I mean, sure, if you want to do that, have at it. But, you know. You gotta have a nice balance, you know. You know like people like FaZe Jeb's fans that are like 100% of the time fist me, daddy. I mean, that's fine. You know, it's whatever. But at least, you know, you know, I mean, if they want to have fun that way, I, I guess they can have fun that way. It's not a bad thing. It's just like, not, not my kind of thing. You know, it's nice having, it's nice having people that understand, you know. Because I try to use these series to have people understand both my trains of thought and also a little bit of like, you know, YouTube. You know, I want people to understand what I do. I want people to understand, like, a little bit more of what I do, what it's like. I want people to understand how it, it functions. You know, I want people to understand what my job is like and how my job is, uh, uh, like, works out. And what I can, you know, what I can make from it. And, you know, I want you to understand where I'm coming from. You know? I'm a person like everyone else. I may, I may have a YouTube following, but... I have that following for a reason. Probably not, probably, it's probably because I'm not a douche bag, you know? If I, if I got a following, it's because people seem to like me, obviously. And that's something I gotta keep up. I gotta, I gotta find, I gotta look at my roots and feel like, okay, why do people like my channel? Why do people like my stuff? Why are people watching me? And you gotta, you know, that's why I take, I take, and I learn from that. I'm like, okay, well, that's because of this, that, this, you know? What are the reasons? Oh shit, that's bad. Oh, 
Oh, there we go. I'm a little scared now. One sec. The Panzer Soldats are a bit of a problem. There we go. Oof. Nice. Got that zombie blood. Hmm. <sighs> well. Not sure what else to say anymore. Kind of done my thing. Kind of just like... Can't really think of what else I want to say either. I mean, I think I've, I think I've, tr I think I've conveyed what I wanted to say the best I could. You know? I don't, I'm not trying to be insultive to anyone because at the end of the day, you know... It's your li it's, like I said, it's your life. You make your own choices. Now, if you think my advice is dumb, then don't do it. If you think that anyone's advice is dumb, don't do it. Oh my goodness. Oh, I was hoping that would... Uh, fuck. I was worried that might happen. Oh no! Well, I guess it was a decent time for me to end. Okay, well, it was a good round, decent length video. I hope I conveyed what I wanted to say the best I could because I don't want it to come off as egotistical and I don't want it to come off as me trying to insult you for the job that you currently have. I'm just saying, people like to make a lot of excuses in their current situation. At the end of the day, this isn't about that. It's about your life, what you want to do. Nothing involves, nothing about your life is being held up and a puppet strings by other people. If it feels like it is, fix it. And then you're going to live a lot happier life. All right. My name is Brick Yorkaday. If you watched all the way to the end, go ahead and type. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> go ahead and type, would you kindly, in all caps. All right. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Fireside Bricky. This has been Bricky. This was the final map for Black Ops 2, which means Black Ops 3 is next week with Shadows of Evil. I wish you the best of luck. I hope I helped you out. I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye-bye.